Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Maryland Snap Ed's Making the Most series. So this is a series of Facebook Lives where we have been talking about ways to make the most of the food resources that are available to the community right now. So since the start of the pandemic, almost exactly one year ago, if you can believe that, still dealing with that myself, <laughs> um, there have been free school meals available to all students in Maryland. So we've talked about um, highlighting some of the places in Maryland, how to access them, they're available statewide. We've also talked about foods coming from your pantry. Uh, so whether they're already in your pantry because they're, they're um, inexpensive, they last a long time and how to really use those to start meals, but also foods that might, you might be receiving from a food pantry. And today we're gonna kind of uh, shift to talking a little bit about another uh, form of assistance in getting food into your kitchen, which is Pandemic EBT. Now, this is a really great program that's been available, but it has been the source of a lot of confusion and even some frustration. So we wanted to take this chance to um, bring in some guests, some experts who know about this su subject and um, give them a chance to have some dialogue with us and with our participants and answer some questions about uh, pandemic EBT. So before we move on to that, I want to uh, say my usual disclaimers. We wanna know who's joined us. Please introduce yourselves in the chat. Um, so your, uh, your county and your, uh, well, the county if you're in Maryland, your city and state, if you're joining us from outside of Maryland, also post questions in the chat. We have a lot of already submitted questions and planned questions that we will answer, um, but we'll try to get to as many in the chat as we can. As always, this is being recorded. The recorded session will appear in our Facebook feed. Um, share that out with folks who need the information. We also post it in, on YouTube a day or so afterwards. And we'll also maybe put together uh, some of the questions in print form in a, in a blog post. So we'll be sharing all that following the session. So. Um, so I will go ahead and introduce our guests. We have with us today, Tamlin Kelly, who is a senior manager at No Kid Hungry, and Aisha Holmes, who is the director of Maryland No Kid Hungry. So welcome Tamlin and Aisha. Um, and if you wouldn't mind, just introduce yourself and let our guests, or sorry, let our audience know uh, who you are and what you do and what, what No Kid Hungry is. Tamlin, go ahead. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for having us here today. Um, we're excited to be here to share a little bit more about the PEBT benefits. And um, my name again is Tamlin Kelly, and I'm a senior manager at No Kid Hungry. Um, I work at the national level to um, increase access to SNAP or the food stamp program and also to PEBT, which is what we'll be talking about today. Great. And Aisha? Good morning, everyone. My name is Aisha Holmes, and I am the director of Maryland's uh, No Kid Hungry campaign. Um, and uh, looking forward to sharing this conversation with you this morning. Wonderful. Okay, I already see some questions coming in in the chat. Some reflect things we already have planned to answer. Um, so I'm going to just start at a very high level, and we just uh, want, in a brief synopsis, what is PEBT? Sure, so PEBT um, stands for Pandemic Electronic Benefits Transfer, and it's a federal nutrition program that provides a grocery benefit for families to purchase food during this crisis. The benefits were first available in the spring of 2020 for families with school-aged children. And these benefits were provided to replace the school meals that kids were missing because schools were closed. Last year when um, the benefits were issued, it was, a, it was provided for $5.70 per day. Um, so most students received $367 for the period of March through June of last year. Um, and this benefit was provided to over 455,000 students in Maryland. Um, and so if you do the math, which is not, not my strong point, but when you do the math, you'll see that Maryland um, families received about $167 million in PBT benefits last spring. So this year, um, the 2020-2021 school year, 
each eligible child will receive $6.82 per day in food benefits for each day that school is closed um, or when children are not able to attend in-person learning. Um, the benefit amount um, will vary, um, but the maximum will be about $34 per child per week. Um, and another important change this year is that the eligibility has been extended to young children, preschool age children age zero to six. Great. So you touched on this, um, but just to kind of put it a, a, in, in a tidy way, who is eligible? And um, April did ask, is it automatic? Do we need to reapply? Do, what do families need to do to get these benefits in their pocket? Yes. So in terms of who's eligible, there are two main groups. The first is this new group of zero to six, ages zero to six. Um, and so for those kids, the ones who are eligible are those who are in families receiving SNAP benefits or food stamps. SNAP stands for the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Um, in Maryland, it's also sometimes known as the Food Supplement Program or FSP. Um, and so anyone who's um, age zero to six and in a family receiving SNAP benefits will, um, is eligible. The other um, criteria is that you have to be in an area that's impacted by the pandemic. So that means that schools and things are closed, which um, pretty much applies everywhere in Maryland. <laughs> um, so that's the, the specifics in terms of who's eligible for zero to six. In terms of school aged children, um, kids are, avail kids are uh, eligible if they're eligible for free or reduced price meals at school. So this includes students who attend a community eligibility provision school or a CEP school, um, which is a school that offers universal free meals to all students. Um, and if it's okay with you, I'd like to just um, take a little bit of a sidebar here into CEP for a minute. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so CEP is um, a school meal funding option that allows schools to serve universal free breakfast and lunch. So CEP schools are sometimes called hunger-free schools because the meals are available to all students, just like other resources like textbooks and desks. So in CEP schools, there's no unpaid school meal debt. There's no lunch shaming. There's no stigma around school meals. So it's a really great program. Um, it's also important for public health um, and improves education outcomes while reducing hunger and food insecurity. So CEP schools don't collect the free and reduced price meal forms. Um, and that helps to save administrative costs, which is a, another benefit of the program. Um, and um, because of that, um, all kids who attend a CEP school are eligible for PEBT benefits. Um, so that's the important um, connection there that I wanted to draw. Um, in Maryland, there are over, there are actually 367 CEP schools this year and over 172,000 students attend a CEP school. So um, back, we'll get back onto the, the main road of PEBT for a minute. So in addition to being eligible for free or reduced meals or attending a CEP school, um, a student has to be engaged in virtual or hybrid learning in order to qualify for PBT. So if for some reason you're in a school that their kids are still going to the school building every day, then you're not eligible for PBT. I don't think that exists in Maryland, but th that's the key piece as well. Um, and then the one last point I wanted to make about eligibility uh, for PBT is that it is not considered part of the public charge test. Um, and this is important for immigrant and mixed status families to know. Uh, just a quick clarifying question. If a family is uh, never qualified for free and reduced meals before, and they, um, but something's changed in their family household income, and they're newly eligible, could they submit their farms form, which by the way, we did put a link to all the free and reduced meal forms in Maryland, thanks to you guys. So those are a link in the chat for folks who need to access those. Could they submit those forms now and receive PEBT when that becomes available, when those benefits come in? Yes. Okay. So, um, yes, I'm sorry, I didn't get to, the second part of your question was, do families need to apply? Um, so this, this is a really important question. Um, and 
some of the questions that have been asked, we, we unfortunately don't know the exact answer yet. And that's because um, PEBT is a federal program and the state of Maryland has to apply and submit a plan for how they're going to issue these benefits. And that plan has not yet been approved. So Maryland has not yet been approved to issue these benefits. And that plan will have lots of details in it, including exactly how and when people are gonna get benefits. So some of these things we don't know exactly yet, um, but we do know that for most families, the PEBT benefits will be provided automatically and families don't need to do anything. So if you receive SNAP already, um, your PEBT benefits will probably be loaded right onto your card again, like they were last year. Um, if you receive PEBT benefits last year on a separate card, um, the new benefits will probably be issued on that same card. Um, and let's see. So yes, as you were saying about um, for students who are um, whose income has changed since last year, um, we want to make sure that they have filled out their free and reduced meal forms so that the school knows that they qualify for PBT benefits. Um, so there are two really important pieces for families to know. One is to make sure that your address is correct with your school, um, because that's the address they're going to use to send you information about PBT. And the second is to make sure that you've completed the school meal benefit application or the farms form. Um, and again, the link is in the chat um, to find those, those forms. Most school districts have an online version. Um, so most families are, don't need to do anything. I think kindergartners, um, transfer students, and families who've had a change in their income from last year, they're the ones that really need to make sure that the school is aware um, that they qualify. Thanks for that. Yeah, and so we are getting to the number one hot topic question, which you've gotten in the chat mm -hmm. and submitted ahead of time and anticipated is on everybody's mind is when are we going to get our benefits? And I just want to acknowledge that, you know, the communication has not been easy to navigate. Uh, this program is, a, you know, it is such an asset and families are counting on it, especially if they have difficulty ask, uh, accessing food meal or school meals due to transportation um, or location or working hours. Um, so it is, I, I acknowledge it's, it's fully frustrating. We will post in the chat a link. It's, it's not going, we can't project when the Maryland plan will be approved. Um, but if you wanna keep an eye on it and know when you should expect to start hearing some communication at the state level, there's a link where you can check on the USDA site just to see when Maryland's plan is approved. You'll see about half the states have had their plans approved. So it's not an, it's not an answer, but at least gives you something that you can keep your eye on. Um, but just to kind of put this in context, something that that um, about the complications of this, every school district has navigated the pandemic differently, depending on, you know, the prevalence in the community in each county of spread. And so, you know, there's a possibility that every every school building in the county, every student could be getting a different um, a, a different amount on the EBT card. So that's why this is so much more complicated than last spring when every student was out. Um, so, and I see so many questions coming in and I'll try to hit on as many as I can, but like I said, we'll try to answer a lot of those in a blog post that we'll post afterwards. Um, the other thing I, I really want to emphasize is that throughout this entire series, um, our Making the Most series, we've been talking about using school meals and accessing food assistance resources. So if, if um, you are struggling to put food on the table, we're going to post a bunch of resources in the chat that might be helpful to you until PEBT comes in. Um, so Maryland No Kid Hungry has this really cool texting application. I tried it yesterday. You can text food to 877-877 and it will not only tell you the closest school meal site, but also the closest pantry that uh, provides free food. So that's really cool because that information can be tough to navigate. The Maryland 211 system, it, you'll get somebody on the phone if you call 211 that can help you figure this out, figure out how to access food, uh, emergency food resources. Um, and we also have some, some information about applying for um, SNAP and EBT if you're struggling to put food on the table. So um, keep using those resources. We don't wanna encourage people to just hold out for PEBT to arrive. Um, there are resources in the community um, to serve folks who, who are struggling right now. And it's, I mean, it is a, a really challenging time that none of the rest of us have seen. And go back and check out 
are making the most um, series on YouTube, all of our videos, which talk about using school meal foods to prepare healthy recipes that your kids will love so that if there are leftover milks or leftover fruit cups, you can be using them in, in, in ways so that there's no waste. Uh, sorry, the uh, Evelyn, you asked to repeat the number. If you dial 211, I think that's the number um, I was referring to that'll get you to uh, the Maryland 211 system that it, you'll get to talk to somebody and they handle everything from people who need housing assistance, emergency food, mental health, emergency kind of stuff. Um, the texting application is you text the word food, F-O-O-D, to 877-877. Um, so we talked a little bit about the nature of the delays. Um, and there is an increase in the rate, as you mentioned. So once those funds do come through, it will be at that increased rate. And do I understand collect correctly that that's funds when they do come through, it will be all the way back to October 1. Yes. Okay. So it sounds like families will be receiving a large lump sum once it does come through, once the benefits are distributed. So how can families check and manage their balance so that they can really make the most of this? Thank you. Yeah, that's a good question that we, we are hearing a lot. Um, so when you use the EBT card on the bottom of the receipt, it will tell you how much money is left in your account. So you can um, remember to check that or to look back on the last receipt. Um, you can also go to the Connect EBT website, which is Maryland, the um, contractor that Maryland has for their EBT system. Um, if you set up a username and password, you can check your balance there. And you can also view all the history of, of times you've used your card. Um, there's also a 1-800 number um, that you can call to check your balance. Um, so when you call, you have to type in your card number and then it'll tell you your balance. So I think we're putting that in the chat, right? Yeah, so we're, we have the, um, the app that we're gonna put in the chat. That's oh, the let, me tell you the, let me just, okay. So there's also the, um, the connectebt.com is the uh, website, the Maryland um, EBT website. The call to center number is 1-800-997-2222. Um, and then the other um, resource that you just mentioned is Fresh EBT, which is a smartphone app that you can put on your phone. Um, this allows you to check your balance, but it also has other um, neat features like coupons and there's a map to show you where there's a farmer's market near you that accepts SNAP um, or a grocery store. Um, and so I think that that link is in the chat, right? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Um, real quick, before we move on to our next planned questions, um, by the way, we will have this uh, recording will be posted both on our Facebook feed as well as on YouTube. Um, but one person asked, and I apologize, I, I forget who asked it. Um, they have three kids, but, but would they expect to get three EBT cards or one EBT card for the family? So that's going to be in the detailed plan once it's approved. So we don't know for sure yet. Um, last year, it was three separate cards. They provided a one card for each child. Um, some states are providing one card per family. So um, we don't know yet how that's actually gonna uh, play out in Maryland, unfortunately. Okay. And so um, will it be, this is another question in the chat um, from Yesenia, if I'm, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, will it be monthly after, so you get the, the lump sum for the retroactive funds, or will there be uh, continued funds added? So again, that's also going to be in the plan. Um, states are allowed to provide two months at a time, in addition to, so there's going to be the lump sum, but then they can also provide two months at a time. So we don't know yet if Maryland's going to provide it monthly or every two months Um but we did, um, I want to share some more really good news, and that's in the, um, the stimulus plan that just passed in D.C., and um, the president has not yet signed. Um, but that bill does provide for the benefits, the PEBT benefits, to be extended through the summer months. So okay. that's really exciting um, and good news for families. Um, so, yeah, in terms of the exact distribution schedule and when benefits will come out, uh, we don't have those details yet, unfortunately. Great. Um, I know this is this is not 
you know, the news everybody wants to hear that we, we there are all these unknowns, but I think hopefully it is helpful to our viewers to at least know the context. Um, and again, we will both uh, post this recording as well as summarize uh, some of the, the frequently asked questions about the timing and, and where to, to get these resources. Now we do have some folks who said they didn't get theirs last year. Who, where, where would they reach out to? Would it be the Maryland Department of Human Resources? If they're uh, from the you know initial spring summer PEBT was never received, yeah. So Maryland has a great um, resource on their website. So if um, I think we posted dhs.maryland.gov/pebt, we posted that. So if you go to that website, there is a customer inquiry form. Um, it's um, it's a web-based form. You just put in your information and let them know whatever the problem is that you're having. You didn't get your card. You lost your card. Um, you don't think it's the right amount um, or what, whatever the question may be. Um, and that's a great way to, to sort of flag that for them. Um, if you didn't get your card, the other things you should probably check is make sure that the address that the school has for you is correct um, because lots of cards were sent to the wrong place and were undelivered. So um, that's, a, that's a common problem. Okay. Um, all right, so we do have the DHS link in the chat, but again, we'll, we will summarize this in a print resource. Um, and just I've seen the, the question come up several more times. If you missed it initially, we don't know the timeline for when, when the, the federal government will approve Maryland state plan for distribution, um, but we do have um, the website where you can check to, to just check that on a daily basis. I do. <laughs> Makes me feel at least I'm I'm doing something to keep on top of things, um, and we'll we'll include that in our our print summary that we create. So the last thing that I really want to talk about here is um, so we're there's going to be this huge lump sum that comes in. I mean it's going to be several hundred dollars for and to make sure they make the most of this um, this this big lump sum that's going to come in um, hopefully in the next couple months. <laughs> Weeks. Let's be optimistic. <clears throat> so, are the funds good for for? Oh, sorry, I wasn't sure if Larissa was going to take that one or not. <laughs> um, so, one thing to keep in mind is that the the PEBT money is, will be good for one year. Um, so, you don't have to spend it all at once. Um, you can sort of spread it out until um, the times when you need it more. Um, the, um, and so the, you know, having the app and, and being able to check your balance, I think is important um, as far as that goes. Yeah, and um, so we're gonna post some links to resources that Maryland SNAP-Ed has about just, um, we talk a lot to families about stretching their food dollar. So when you get this big lump sum, it might be a good opportunity to restock your pantry with healthy foods. So we have um, a graphic that we'll put, post about stocking up on pantry foods, um, as well as about some uh, shelf stable healthy snacks to keep on hand. So that might be a, an opportunity for you to restock uh, for the coming months. Um, we also have some resources that we'll post on budgeting to avoid spending all at once um, and expend the benefit because who knows what's going to happen for your family or for you know your county, the state, the country in the in over the next year. We've all learned not to think we know what's coming our way. So um, so budgeting, meal planning, uh, making grocery lists. So we're going to share several resources in the chat about that. Um, and again, make sure that you are, you know, you're thinking about the grocery store, but also uh, pantry, you know, food pantries, and then incorporating school meals into your, your budget, sorry, your food planning. Um, one question that's come up a couple times, and I think um, it's probably one of those things that the details are pending in the plan, is how will the PEBT benefit if, if um, students go back to hybrid, um, or if they stay virtual, where the Will those days in school be counted as you know they had access to meals, so they won't be won't be counted in the total for the reimbursement? Right. So it, the exact details will be in the plan. States can do it in different ways. In general, if your student is back in school, then they're not eligible for PEBT benefits. Um, if they're back in school every day, all day, then they won't, they're not eligible for any benefits. If it, they're in a hybrid schedule where they're in school maybe twice a week, um, then they'll receive a reduced amount. So 
there are different ways that states can do that. They can provide the same amount of benefit to all students um, in a hybrid learning environment. Um, so those are, that's part of the complexity of why it's taking so long is trying to figure out um, you know, <laughs> um, the attendance of each student um, each day is, is quite a lot of information to calculate. So, um, but in general, if you're all virtual, you'll receive the full benefit. If you're hybrid, um, you'll receive a, a, a lower amount. Um, and if you're in school every day, then you're not eligible for PVP. But free meals will be available through the end of uh, the current fiscal year. So if your student is in school, they won't be getting a PB PBT allocation for that day, but they will get a free school meal. Um, absolutely, because every, every student is eligible for a free school meal um, until the end of this, so through the summer. Um, by that the way, just extended as well. Oh. Yeah, we, that just came out. That's breaking news as well. So the summer meals um, were extended. So right now, all children have access to free meals at school, the grab and go meals. Um, and that was supposed to end at the, at the end of the fiscal year, as you said, but that's also been extended through the summer months. Great. Uh, I want to thank those of you who are helping each other in the chat by answering some of the questions. I think that's really, really awesome that you guys are, are supporting one another. Um, so one final um, question for you guys. Is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience? Um, I will say one more thing, and that is just the importance of the SNAP benefits. Um, if you have SNAP, the PBT will be loaded automatically onto your card, which makes things really easy. But right now, because of the pandemic, SNAP benefits have been raised for all families. So if you have a family of four, um, the SNAP benefits are $782 a month. Um, and that would be, then you would add the PBT benefits on top of that. So it really is a very significant benefit. Um, and so we, I think we put in the chat or we will put in the chat the link um, to apply for SNAP. And there also are some groups in Maryland, um, Catholic Charities and Maryland Hunger Solutions that offer help um, signing up for SNAP if you'd like. Um, they can actually help you do that right over the phone. Um, so I think, um, do we have those phone numbers listed or do you want me to read them off? Uh, reading them off is fine. We do have them. They might be buried in the chat, but <laughs> okay. straight. and again, we'll consolidate all this into a, a blog post that we can link to uh, in, we'll post it in the comments. So hopefully everybody that's participated will see it as well as we'll put it on our page. But yeah, if you want to share those with us, because that's, you're saying that's kind of one-on-one -on -one assistance with that. Right. Yeah. Um, so you can apply for a SNAP online at My DHR Benefits. Um, but if you would like to get some help or if you have questions, you can call Catholic Charities and their phone number is 1-667-600-2291. Um, and then also Maryland Hunger Solutions provides um, help signing up for SNAP and their phone number is 866-821-5552. Great, uh, one last question and I, I we are gonna ha have to <laughs> let you guys go at some point. This has just been so productive. Um, what if your child has moved and needs a new card? Um, so if you've moved, you wanna make sure that the school has your new address. Um, if you've lost the card, um, you know, if you've moved, it's okay. The same card will still will still work. Um, but if you need a new card, then you can either call the EBT number, um, and I can try to find that number again real quick. Um, you can also fill out that Google Doc on the website that I mentioned earlier, the customer inquiry form, which is at dhs.maryland.gov. Um, and the EBT phone number is... Hmm. I'm seeing all these numbers here on my on my notes, and I'm not seeing the number for that right now. But we we'll have it. We have it in the chat. I have it. It's oh, it's thank you. <laughs> no problem, Tim. One eight hundred nine nine seven two 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 two. Great. Okay, so for our audience, uh, some action items for you. If you have not previously filled out forms for free and reduced meals. Um, but our, you know, your family household income has changed. 
um, fill out your free and reduced meal forms to make sure you won't miss out on this benefit once it comes through. Um, if you've had, had issues with the spring summer PEBT, reach out to the, um, through the DHS inquiry form if you never received that. Um, and uh, check back here to number one, share this recorded video once it's posted with anybody else who could use this information. And like I said, we will have um, a consolidated print uh, blog post that should hopefully answer these question, uh, answer questions uh, for folks in a more organized fashion that they can kind of refer to. Um, and also we'll post this on YouTube. So if you prefer to share that way, um, we'll have it posted on our YouTube as well. So Larissa, if you wouldn't mind um, putting up our final slides. Up in a second. There we go, it's just so everyone can see. So um, eatsmart.umd.edu is the SNAP Ed sort of cooking website. We've got recipes as well as uh, tips for, for stretching your food dollar there. Um, if you're watching this live, facebook.com slash eatsmartmd, that you've already found us there. <clears throat> um, but youtube.com slash user slash eatsmartmd is our uh, YouTube channel. And we have a whole playlist for the um, Making the Most series. So this will uh, recorded session will be available there. And you can check out the other sessions in the series where we've provided lots of tips and recipes for making the most of the food, uh, food access resources that are coming in through school meals, uh, through food pantries, um, to make sure you're, that, that you're making healthy meals for your family and reducing waste. Um, there's our email address. If you have any further questions, we'll do our best to kind of go back and answer questions in the chat that we didn't get to. Um, and please join us in the future. We've got um, our series. We are taking a week off next week uh, to kind of gear up for springtime. So, um, so <clears throat> just, you know, we'll re we're actually going to repost this broadcast next week in case anybody is used to tuning in at 11. But starting on March 25th, we are going to talk about another food access point, which is gardening. So each week we're going to feature growing and cooking with a different vegetable. And we'll have some kid-friendly activities as well as some more sort of adult-centered gardening activities followed by a recipe. Um, and we'll be posting throughout the, the next week sort of some household materials to gather. We are all about upcycling and recycling things that you have in your home to do some little gardening experience, experiments and um, uh, get your kids involved. So thank you to Tam Lynn and Aisha for joining us. Thank you to everyone for your participation. Again, we know that we you know, don't have a lot of concrete answers, but everyone out there deserves to kind of understand what's going on and to have resources so that you can help um, put food on the table uh, in the intervening time. So um, thanks so much. And we hope to see you back here in two weeks at 11 o'clock. <laughs>